QuickBooks Online 2023, Home Office Expense Tracking Method Number 2, Tax Adjusting Class with Bank Feeds and Bank Rules. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to do so and duplicate. Right click in the tab to do so and duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle. The reports on the left. We want this time the balance sheet report and then tap into the right reports on the left, then the profit and loss, the income statement. Going to close the hamburger. We're going to change the range from a 10123 tab, 123 tab and run it and then tab to the left, closing up the hamburger and change that range to the same. A 10123 tab, 123 tab and run it that's the setup process we do every time i'm going to tab over to the income statement last time we talked about the home office deductions breaking out between the amount that's deductible because they're business deductions versus personal and we looked at an adjusting entry method which is quite nice because it, it gives you all the information in one area and it gives you like a worksheet that you can use and you can do that method periodically at the end of the month or the year possibly after you actually do the tax return so you have a worksheet tying out to what the difference is on the tax return and on the books the way we did that is we turned in the class tracking and we looked at the classes this way on the income statement so that we can see our adjusting entry so we set up our accounts under the home office parent account we put everything that might need to be broken out uh, using a ratio, which is the typical method under the home office. And then we did our adjusting entry, allowing us to have the total here, which might be necessary. These totals might be necessary for tax preparation. And then we also can see the breakout, which is the business side versus the personal, giving us this nice reconciliation, which could be useful for taxes. Now we could do a similar method and we have our same grouping of accounts, but as the expenses go through our bank feeds, if we already know the ratio that we think is going to be used, we can basically automate this as we go and possibly use the class tracking. I'm sorry, the, the bank feed rules in the banking area here. And then we've got the items that are going to go through the checking and we can use our rules and our classes to be breaking out between the business and professional. So in order to see that, I'm actually going to mock, uh, mock up the bank feed. So I'm going to make an Excel worksheet and imagine that these expenses are going to be imported like a bank feed connection into our bank feed so that we can make rules with this information. So I'm just going to open up Excel and jot down some transactions here. So all we need to, to pull this into QuickBooks is to say that we're going to have a date field. We're going to have an amount and a description 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 there should be a d there right let me check it on the spell check boom yeah it has an e in it and a couple other changes too idiot whatever whatever dude spelling's not important home tab we're gonna go to the short date and let's make the header boldened and we'll make this in 2023 this time so i'll go from 01 15 uh, two three oh one dash fifteen dash two let's do it in two four so we have a different year that we can work with and let's say the amount was uh let's say uh 240 and let's say this is the utility company that we had 
uh, you, the, let's say the gas company. And then we had on 215, 24, 230 for the gas company. And then we had on 115, let's make it 16, 24, we had the uh, 2000, 2000 for the landlord, landlord. And then on 216, 24, we had another 2000 to the landlord. And then if we owned our property, we would be paying not the landlord, but we would have say uh, the, the payment to uh, the bank. So let's say on 117, 24, we paid the bank, let's say uh, 1000, or let's say we paid them 2300 to the bank. And then on 217, we paid the bank 2300 to the bank. And then maybe we had electric to to zero. So this is the, the sand one. 18 to four we had uh we had the uh, 310 or let's press try high 190 to the electric company and then on 218 to four we had 183 to the electric company now this one should also be two four and then I should have put them all in as negatives. So I've gone back in and I've just added an, a negative sign into each of these items. Then we're gonna save it, not as an Excel file, but as a CSV file, which is easy to do. We could just go to the file up top, save as, browse it. I'm just gonna put it into uh, the this folder, cause this is, and I'm gonna call it bank feed office. I'm gonna call it number three, so I know where it's at. But the key thing is I'm changing it from an Excel file to a CSV file with this dropdown. The CSV file is uploadable. The Excel file is not. It's an easy change to make though. And then we have it. So if I go on to uh, QuickBooks now, we're in once again the banking. And then in the banking side, we're not gonna link to the bank, but rather hit the drop down and upload from a file. If you don't have a checking account or something set up, you can add them as you do the upload. Then I'm just gonna add the bank feed here. And I'm gonna pick this one as the one I want, I believe. Continue, select the account. If you don't have one, you can set one up. I'm just gonna pull it into the checking account in my practice problem. And it has a header row, only one column instead of two. And the date format is M M D D Y Y Y Y date lined up to date on the columns description lined up to description amount lined to amount looks MUI B to the N B N to me. So I'm then going to select all of the transactions, which they're all negative outflows looks good. Let's continue. And QuickBooks has pulled in eight transactions. Okay, that is good. That's what we want to see. So if we saw these then pull through to the bank feeds here, we might sort them, for example, by the description and we might try to set up rules as we go. So let's start off with the landlord down here and say, okay, if I was normally entering this through the bank feeds and I typed in landlord, I possibly would see in the memo that I paid the landlord if it was an electronic transfer and I could copy that and put it up here, but I spelled it wrong in the memo. So it should be landlord. The Lord of the land, you spelled the Lord of the land's name wrong. Off with your head. I'm just kidding. Any case, we're going to say this was for the rent. Rent that's under the subcategory and of home office. And note, however, that I, and I have my class fields over here. Now, the classes we turned on in a prior presentation, just to recap what that looks like. It's in the cogs tab up top accounting and taxes on the left we're in the advanced stuff uh over here and then we're in the categories so i've turned on the class tracking i'm not going to warn every time i enter if i don't add a class because i'm only adding classes to some items and we're using the default here so i'm going to save that and done so boom so that means our class field is now being populated so that looks good 
Uh, but what I need to do is be able to allocate this item to multiple classes. I need to be breaking out to multiple classes, which means I need multiple line items. So if I was just doing the data input, I can do that with the split field down here. And so now I've painted the landlord and I can say that we have the home office and I can choose a class and I have my tax adjusting class. If you don't have one, you can add one. This is this is going to be the adjustment one. And basically, in our case, it's going to be the personal part of the expense. So if I was to pull up a calculator and say we're going to say according to our ratio, we think 30 percent is business versus personal. So if this was a $2,000 bill, the 30% uh, would be business versus the personal. So I could say I want the amount to be uh, here, which is going to be, this is the, the personal side. Let's do this one, home office. And this is for the rent. And this would be the, the non-tax adjust class. And this would be the 600 versus the 1,000, the 1,400. And that would give us that nice breakout. However, I, I don't want to have to do that every time. I'd like to make a rule to be able to do this. So let's say, let's say uh, I'm going to close this. And instead of doing that, I'm going to create a rule down here and try to automate this and see if I can use a percentage rule. So I'm going to call this the land, the landlord rule. Let's see if I could spell it right. The money out rule. And, and we're going to say in the description, I, I like to use the bank text most of the time. And if you see in the bank text, this unproperly spelled landlord right there, then you apply the rule. So the rule is now being applied to two transactions. And we want you to be a uh, transaction type is an expense. The category is correct. And then we need to add a split though. So I can try to allocate to two different classes. So I'm going to add a split now and I can split. This is where it's kind of cool because I can split based on the percent or dollar amount. So I don't want to have to recalculate the dollar amount like we did before. I could split it by percent and I can just say that I want the percent that's going to this one is going to be the 30%, 30% home office. And that one uh, isn't going to have a class. And then on this one, we want the 60% going to the uh, rent for the home office. And this one does have a class, which we're going to say is the tax adjustment class. So now I can kind of do it automatically as I go. Hopefully we can auto add those if we want, or I can kind of test them out and make sure that it's applying to the ones we want. Let's do that. I'm going to save it and something's not quite right. That only adds to 90%. Okay. <laughs> this needs to be 70. Okay. Let's try it again. Let's save it. Let's save it. And then we've got the split. So now it looks like it's applying what we want to do. If I go in here, it's got our rule applied. Let's go ahead and add it and then check it out. Add it and check it out. I'm going to go to my report and run it and then say, okay, K Paso down. Oh, I'm in 2024 now. So let's change this to 010124 to 123124 and run it. And so now you've got this, this nice breakout. So once again, I said 30% if I can get my percents right. Uh, let's see, 4,000 total for the 2000s for each month times uh, 0.3 is what's going to be pulled in here. And then the other side, minus 4,000, is the 2008, which is going to be assigned to the personal, or 4,000 times 0.7 got assigned to the tax adjustment. So this gives us, we can kind of do the data input and get this nice breakout as we go this way so that we can see kind of the business numbers and the total numbers. And it gives us the total here, which still might be useful so that we can give the accountant the total number because they may need that number to, to still break out, even though we're giving them the, you know, the 30% the breakout of the business portion. 
So this should allow us to kind of track it as we go on a perpetual method, possibly giving us more, more numbers for better internal decision making while still giving us the total so that we can give that to the tax preparer and allow us that tying out kind of process so that we can see, you know, this number, then the tax adjustment and, and the tax adjusted number. So if I was to just do the same concept for the rest of them, it would be the same kind of idea. So if I went into the electric item here, we can say it's the electric and I'm gonna make a rule for it. Let's create a rule and I'm gonna copy the description. What was in the description? Electric company rule. It's a money out rule. I usually use the bank text and electric. If it's in there, the rule is now being applied to two transactions, but I have to use the split thing here and it's gonna be a percentage split. And I'm gonna say that we're gonna have a percent that's gonna be 30% home office that doesn't have a class. And then 70% uh, on the home office. This is the home office for the, what am I doing? The utilities, right? Yes, utilities that does have a class. This is utilities. Util, utilities. Okay, ah, utilities. Why is it being difficult? Utilities, okay, and this doesn't have a class of the tax adjusting. Okay, hopefully I did that right. Boom, it picks up those two, so I can just add them and they should just add automatically going forward or they'll allow me to review it. I could have them add automatically. I'm gonna go to the tab to the right and then run it. And so now we've got our utilities breaking out once again, kind of as we go. Let's pull out the trusty calculator if I may and just double check that I've got things going the right way. So the total here for the utilities, 372 for the two months times 0.3 is the 11160 and the uh, 372 times 0.7 is the personal for the adjustment side. Okay, one more or a couple more times. If I do the gas, it's similar kind of thing here. So I'll do this fairly quick. We can create a rule. We can say that it's gonna be the gas company rule. This is the gas rule, gas rule. Uh, and then description, bank text, gas, two are applied, split it. You, percent 30 percent gas uh not the automobile though <laughs> you've got to have your proper types of gas this is the other gas this is six this is 70 and this is gonna be also the gas under the home office gas Home all. Let's say home office. Oh, I put it under utilities, right? Yeah. And then this one is going to go to the tax adjustment. All right, saving that. And we can add this one and add this one. And then if I scroll up, uh, we should have that one didn't pull in properly. Where did it go? K pos K pos. Oh, it went into the utilities. It's in the utilities. That's good. Okay. So then if I go back on over, just note the bank one, I don't want to go into details on the bank one, but it adds another level of complexity with the bank feeds, which doesn't just have this breakout thing, but it also has the fact that we're paying principal and interest. So the problem with these ones is that even though I'm paying 2,300 and 2,300 same dollar amount, it's only the amount that's going to be the expense, the interest, as opposed to the principal that we can then uh, break out between business and uh, personal. And the, the, the amount that's going to interest will differ with every payment. So when we're trying to automate the system for the bank payments, there's an added level of complexity to try to just have the bank feeds automatically pull in, which doesn't have to do with this percent allocation. It has to do with the fact that the allocation between principal and interest will differ every time. And there's a couple different ways you could deal with that. Like you could do a, 
you could try to automate your bank feeds so everything goes into like the loan account, decreasing the loan account, and then periodically adjust for the interest portion. And then when you do that, you can properly allocate between your your business and your personal at that point uh, in time. Uh, or you could or you would have to actually manually go in here even though you're in the bank feeds and properly allocate between the business portion and the the uh, the the interest, the interest and the principal. So for example, if I went in here and said, I can't really do a rule because I have to kind of manually enter the proper interest versus principal. So I'd have to go in here and say, okay, I need to use the splits and I'd go, okay, now it's going to go to the category of the, the principal portion is going to reduce the loan, a loan payable account. And let's say that, that the amount that's going to the loan payable was uh, 1,500. And then you've got the amount of interest, which is the difference of $800, which we can then break out between 800 times 30%, the business portion, which is the 240. So then I'd have interest, interest expense, which would be, uh, I'm gonna say uh, the 240 and then the difference, let's add, line for interest expense on the mortgage is the uh the 560 and then this one would go to the class of the tax adjustment so i can't really again i can't really automate this there it is that works but i can't really automate this as easily because of that because of that breakout between the interest and principal in the following transaction will be different. It's not going to be the same breakout between the interest portion, and the principal portion. So that, you know, is a whole, that's a different kind of issue that you could try to do some different methods to work around, but we could just, you know, do that adjustment this way if we wanted to. And then if that pulled over, now we've got a similar kind of breakout down here. And as we go, We've got, and if I just double check that, we've got the the total of 800 times the 0.3, which is the business portion, and the 800 times 0.7, which is the, the personal. So that gives me, as I do the data input, the information I need for taxes, which is really the totals. So the tax software can then recalculate using a similar method, the, the business portion and the personal portion and it gives me the correct numbers kind of as we go so i can use that for my internal my internal uh decision making to see what my profitability is with because that accurate that is a, a a calculation that makes sense between your business and personal for tracking just your per business personal stuff and it should also give us that nice reconciliation what we'd like to see so that when i do do my tax returns I have this this uh, adjusting entry between the business numbers and the personal numbers. So unlike the last method, notice I'm not breaking out the adjusting entry like in its own account, but rather we're breaking it out basically as we go in in using the, these actual accounts basically as we go. But we have a similar kind of calculation. This would be the amount that includes everything that we paid and then we have the personal part that we took out of it and then we have the amount that should be reflected on the actual tax return so we've had this nice little reconciliation worksheet that could be useful in the event of an audit now you might be saying another method that we could use is to take these amounts and say hey look this portion is really personal it should why would i put it on the income statement i could put it on the balance sheet as basically a draws account. And that way, and if you use that method, you don't even really need class tracking. You could put it on the balance sheet. The problem with that is, and we'll take a look at it just to test it out. The problem with that is, is that you don't have this nice total number that you paid here, which you might need for taxes because the tax return is gonna have to take these totals 
and then recalculate using the using the tax software, you know, using the forms and the tax forms to get to the business portion, which should tie out to what we got to if we get to, if we use the same percent. So, so if you say I'm just going to tie the other side out to draws because it's personal, you could do that, uh, but you'd have to make sure that you give the tax preparer the totals, which you can get other ways. Like you can you can print out the information that you put in the draws, or you can actually look at the vendors that you paid and print the vendor detail so that they have this number, which would be on the income statement and the total amount that you paid to the vendors so that they could put that uh, into the tax form. And you, you just wanna make sure that you're clear on what you're doing with that. And you might be able to use that method even if you don't have you know, class tracking. So we, we might take a look at that in a future presentation.